Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ramkrishna Pasumarthi. I am a faculty member at the Department of Electrical Engineering IIT Madras. Uh, this is a course we are running on, on, on non-linear system analysis. Uh, we are using some lectures from the existing database of NPTEL and then adding up couple of other modules to make uh, the series of lectures a lot more coherent. Uh, I will be handling a couple of modules uh, in this course. Uh, and so far you would have learnt a lot of both qualitative and quantitative analysis of, uh, of non-linear systems. Uh, typical uh, distinction between that of linear and non-linear you would have uh, talked about or learnt about existence of uh, multiple equilibria, existence of uh, limit cycles for example, there was things like uh, finite escape time and some other things like uh, existence and uniqueness of solutions where uh, the uniqueness was not always uh, guaranteed and there are some very straightforward examples even in the one dimensional case that you would uh, that you, you would look at. Uh, we also saw uh, an uh, stability analysis via linearization of a nonlinear system what we also traditionally call as the Jacobi linearization and then we saw uh, how the local behavior around that equilibrium point is uh, is in some way related to the linearization around that or the linear approximation around that equilibrium point. And we characterize equilibrium points uh, according to we gave them certain names uh, depending on where the eigenvalues of the linearized uh, system was uh, were, were lying especially the second order we characterize them as nodes, focus, center, uh, also talking about stable nodes, unstable nodes and uh, stable focus, unsta unstable focus uh, and so on. So, what we will learn today is some, some very useful aspect of, uh, of nonlinear systems which are not very common in linear systems. We, I will start with, the, with motivating with the linear systems, but we kind of know why we, why we can avoid that kind of, uh, of, of uh, phenomena. So, that is called the, the theory of, uh, of bifurcations, right. So, we will typically look at what happens when a system parameter is changed. Okay. So, so what we will eventually learn is that things that appear good may turn bad suddenly and vice versa. What was going well with some small change, maybe some environmental condition, it can just go pretty, pretty bad, something which is not desirable. It could also happen the other way, things are not going too well and then you can say, uh, some site change happens, you can see well you are still in some, some kind of a, of a safe region. We will try to characterize those, those behavior qualitatively. Okay. So, uh, just to, to, to uh, motivate a bit, so uh, many times we see that a system is behaving nicely around some uh, operating point and suddenly it just behaves in a, in a way with which we, which we would not uh, anticipate it to without and these things uh, typically come without any, any apparent warning. Okay. So, we will give examples of such phenomena, we will try to characterize them in terms of the theory that we have learned so far right? and also try to, to answer this question of, of uh, how can a differential equation with a continuous dynamics on the right hand side. So, this essentially means I am talking of x dot equal to f of x where the right hand side is smooth. right? So, if, uh, if this is discontinuous then you may say oh because the right hand side is discontinuous something strange is expected to happen. It actually happens when you talk of say switch systems where uh, you switch between two stable systems you could actually end up in, in, a, in a resulting unstable system. Okay. So, how can a differential equation with a continuous dynamics on the right hand side cause such abrupt change in behavior and this change in behavior is what we term as bifurcations and we will see how we can categorize this class of bifurcation points. Okay. So, one example that we could, we would have seen uh, seen a lot and it is also quite kind of intuitive is uh, you just look at uh, a beam under vertical balancing. Right? So, as, as the load increases, well for, for, for normal load the beam just behaves as, as good as it should, uh, but if the load exceeds a certain value, it buckles to one side, right? So, you can see it bends either to this side or it could also be like, like bending to this side, to the, to, to, the, to the opposite side. And we so far have not quantified or, or even look at, looked at it qualitatively why really this happens 
and what does it actually mean in terms of, of systems. You could actually also look at some other examples of, uh, of lasers where uh, as, as, the, as the strength is, is less, uh, it behaves as an ordinary lamp and as the pump strength is increased beyond a certain threshold, it becomes a powerful uh, laser beam. Boiling of water, right? it does not really come with any apparent warning even though we know that at some uh, level of temperature, the, the, uh, the state of water changes into, into a gaseous state. Okay. And they also look at, at insect outbreak. Right. So, uh, you start with some, some small set of insects and all of a sudden you see that the entire crop or entire forest is infected with pests. Same thing with even, even you can call about the recent uh, virus outbreak. Well, you may have uh, initially to begin with few number of people, few tens or few hundreds and you see now uh, close to 100,000 people are uh, infected across, across the globe and it is just keeping on increasing and you and these things do not come with any any apparent warning or any uh, prior model right so we will try to qualitatively analyze the, this kind of behavior okay so where does all this come from uh, so this uh, famous french physicist uh, uh, henry poincar uh, was first asked how does the qualitative behavior of a system change when a certain parameter is is altered okay so, this, well, this was kind of observed, but never given any formal notion until, 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 until quite long or until lots of advances in, in physics, right. Okay. So, this theory is important in analyzing phenomena like gems and you would have uh, read about catastrophes, hysteresis in, in many natural phenomena. And for, for people who are interested in a lot of this theory, there is a, a a book by James Gleick uh, called uh, on, on Chaos Theory. It is a popular read, uh, not, not too much mathematical or academic, but it is it's, it's a good read. So, so, people who are interested beyond what is happening in the textbook or in the course here can actually have a, have a, a look uh, through that. It is it's a uh, book titled Chaos. I do not remember the, the, the title completely by, by uh, James Gleick, assuming I have spelled it correct. Okay, so what is what is bifurcation? We'll first just define it mathematically, and then forget about the mathematical definition, and then look at systems the way we know. Um, so we start with a dynamical system. X dot is f of x, and also also r. And what what does this r actually mean? So if I write down say the Newton second law, I will have x double dot is uh, uh, mass times acceleration, right? Or this is m, sorry, uh, or or f equal to m a which is uh, yeah, m, m x double dot. And if I look at this uh, typical equation, uh, this has to do with the state m x double dot, whereas this is a, is a parameter which I usually do not pay much attention to while I am designing systems so far or what, what I have, uh, whatever I have learned so far, right. So, we will now pay attention to, to parameters that, that occur here, right. So, so that is what we call, call, uh, call as r where x is the state and r is a, is a parameter of the system. So, with this study of bifurcation analysis, we will see how the qualitative behavior of the system changes or how the solution of the system, how the stability of the system changes with some changes in r. Okay? Okay. The secret here is that while these trajectories, right? so you have uh, x at time t starting with some initial condition x0 and some value of parameter is depending smoothly on the initial conditions and the parameters are the limiting behavior need not smoothly depend and we will see why this could happen. Right? It may abruptly jump, it may not uh, necessarily depend smoothly on r and may abruptly jump sometimes. Okay, so, let us start with a, with a very simple scalar uh, linear system. Uh, so, I start with an x system x dot equal to r, r of x okay? and for I just if I just plot it uh, uh, the, the vector field, I see that okay, I can typically look at r being less than 0 when I call it stable right x dot let us say r is minus 1. So, x dot is minus of x I know is stable then say r going greater than 0, just say for instance r equal to plus 1, I have x dot equal to x, this is 
an unstable system. Okay. So, R as this value of R changes from negative to positive, we have in this green region a stable system. The system behaves as a stable system and all of a sudden as this parameter would increase, uh, would change from negative of R would cross 0, you are having an unstable system, right? It goes to infinity and beyond for, for positive R. For here, it is kind of kind of uh, well, well behaved and I can just plot these trajectories x versus time for, for different values of R and you see here as R increases until this region R equal to 0, your, your trajectory is converged to 0, R equal to 0, you are constant and for all R greater than 0, the trajectories just keep, keep blowing up for, for arbitrary initial conditions. Okay, so in in the case of linear systems, okay, let us just start with CISO systems, right? Like for single input, single output systems, I have the nice notion of of transfer function. I have a nice notion of feedback, and I know, say for example, what does what does the root locus tell you? If I just say one over k g times h equal to zero is the characteristic equation of the closed loop, I am just interested in checking how does the system behave for values of k going from uh, 0 to infinity and I just get, get some plots sometimes which uh, they just start here, here and they are stable for all k, sometimes they are unstable. So, I can find this value of k for which a system goes from stable to unstable like in this case the, for all values of r less than 0 I was stable, all values of r greater than 0 the system was unstable. So, I know this, this characterization in terms of, of root locus and therefore, while design you typically as do not want to design a stabilizing controller where the poles of the closed loop system are just slightly to the to the left uh, of, of, of the complex plane. Let us say, say this for example, 0 0.001 minus 0 0.001 plus minus j1 may not be a very smart design because a slight change in parameter could a slight change in environmental conditions could change the parameter and push it to an unstable region and you know that uh, 0 0.001 is, is actually unstable even though it is very like close to the to the origin, right. So, we do, we unknowingly did this analysis while we were doing the root locus in the case in, in our first course on control engineering. What are the, how does the system behavior change as the value of k varies from 0 to infinity. You can also draw the root, negative root locus saying what happens from minus infinity to 0 and we find uh, use use the routh hurwitz criteria to find out what are the values of k for the system is, is, is unstable. It could turn out in many cases or some cases that the system will be stable for all k, for some cases for k slightly uh, greater than 0 you will be unstable and, and, and a bunch of bunch of other things to And therefore, we also learn uh, relative stability in routh hurwitz where we say okay place all my poles to the left of minus 1. Okay, so let us come to the nonlinear case and just start with few examples. Okay. So, let us let me start with this second order system x1 dot is mu minus x1 square, x2 dot is minus uh, x2 and we will ch check what happens to the behavior of this system as mu varies. Okay. So, first is uh, I will just quickly do it for this example and the remaining ones I will just leave you to solve. So, what are the equilibrium points? For sure, x2 equal to 0 is an equilibrium point. And then another equilibrium point is x1 square equal to mu which means this is I am looking at x equal to x1 equal to plus or minus square root of mu. Okay, so, I do it the standard way I just look at the Jacobi linearization resulting in the Jacobian matrix which in this case looks like this minus 2 square root of mu 0, 0 minus 1. Okay. And the other equilibrium, uh, so the system therefore has two equilibrium points. You have uh, plus mu comma 0 which is from this table, uh, from this Jacobian you can find out is a stable node and minus mu comma 0 which is a minus square root of mu comma 0 which is a saddle point. Okay. So, what will be interesting is to check what happens as mu decreases, right. As mu decreases, the saddle and the node approach each other, collide at mu equal to 0 
and for mu less than 0 the system has no equilibrium points. Just let us check this right. So, what happens when mu is less than 0 I am looking for solutions is x 1 is plus minus square root of minus mu right ok. When mu is less than 0 ok this the uh, the guy inside this is a negative number and I would definitely not deal with uh, imaginary uh, equilibrium points right. So, as mu so, these are the two equilibrium points one is stable node another is a saddle point as mu decreases from certain values to, 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 to 0 the saddle node and the, the, the saddle and the node. So, you are looking at something like this right you have a plus square root of mu you have a minus square root of mu ok this is stable this is saddle and as mu decreases they will keep moving to this guy will keep moving to the right this guy will keep moving to the left ok. So, let us see this here from this ok. So, for mu greater than 0 what we have is so this is this is uh, a stable node this is a uh, this is a saddle point and as mu decreases these two keep moving towards each other they meet each other at mu equal to 0 ok let us not really worry about what is the stability at mu equal to 0 that we will keep for later discussion and for mu less than 0 the system does not have any equilibrium ok. So, for positive mu all trajectories so if I look at here this diagram for positive mu all trajectories in this region x 1 so, I am just drawing the, the diagrams like which x 1 and x 2 in the standard face, face portraits. Uh, for all trajectories for which x 1 is greater than minus mu they reach the steady state which is a stable node in, in, in at, at asymptotically. For negative mu all trajectories so, so, for negative mu all trajectories no matter wherever you start you escape to infinity along these lines along the arrows. Here at least for, for mu in the, within this region you can uh, uh, converge to this 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 green and the, the, the green dot is this uh, I just use the green first for stability red for for unstable ok. So, one thing that we observed here is as the equilibrium as as uh, mu changes from positive to negative you had two equilibrium points and for mu less than 0 the equilibrium points disappear totally right. So, this is this is something very strange right and in the linear case you had system only going from stable to unstable region for some certain values of k. Here well the equilibrium points one was stable one was, was unstable as they keep coming close to each other with decreasing mu they just disappear right there is no equilibrium point there is no steady state when mu, mu is less than 0 all trajectories escape to infinity ok. Similarly, I now look at this system where I have x 1 dot is mu x 1 minus x 1 square x 2 dot is. So, this, this equation will pretty much remain the same. So, this system will have uh, two equilibrium points. So, if I just look at mu x 1 minus x 1 square is uh, x 1 mu minus x 1 equal to 0. So, the equilibrium points would be of course, the origin another equilibrium point will be mu comma 0. Okay. And then the Jacobian would be should be easy to compute the Jacobian at uh, so the Jacobian at uh, 0 0 ok I know I will skip some of these steps because you would already have know how to compute this you have 0 minus 1 and uh, the Jacobian at mu sorry mu comma 0 would look something like this minus mu 0 0 minus 1 ok. Now, look at this at 0 0 at 0 0 for mu less than 0 we get that all the eigenvalues are, 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 are negative right. So, this will be a stable node for mu less than 0 and this will become a saddle just say say for mu is equal to minus 1 my eigenvalues 
uh, here would be minus 1 minus 1 this corresponds to a stable load for mu greater than 0 let us say some arbitrary value say mu equal to 1 my eigen values will be plus or minus 1 that corresponds to a saddle ok now look at this uh, equilibrium point at mu 0 mu comma 0 for mu greater than 0 for mu greater than 0 say mu equal to 1 my eigen values are minus 1 minus 1 it is a stable load and it is a saddle for mu less than 0 ok what is happening here let us just check here right ok the some pictures got exchanged in, in the slides but this is essentially corresponding to not a super critical wave but this is like a transcritical bifurcation ok so, so apologies for the for the typo here or for the for mixing up the images ok what happens is uh, look at uh, for mu less than 0 ok and if I look at uh, 0 comma 0 is stable and for mu greater than 0 I will just call it unstable or it is a saddle ok now similarly the point mu comma 0 when uh, mu is less than 0 is a saddle and this is stable for mu greater than 0. So, as as we cross the bifurcation points the stable node becomes a saddle and the saddle becomes a stable node. So, they just kind of exchange their properties. So, here right. So, this was uh, for mu less than 0 the mu less than 0 the origin was stable ok mu less than 0 origin was stable and then the other equilibrium point well this was this was like a saddle right and as you keep increasing mu you cross mu equal to 0 they just change their properties right. So, uh, what was stable now becomes unstable and then there is another equilibrium point here at, at uh, uh, this this uh, equilibrium point which becomes a saddle point ok for, for mu less than 0 right. Uh, so, so, that is uh, so, two things we have seen right in in the first case where I have a saddle and the node they meet together for increasing values for decreasing values of mu and then they just disappear. Now, I have two equilibrium points where the stable node here it becomes a saddle as a, as I cross the bifurcation point and the saddle becomes a stable node ok. ok so ok so this is a text for transcritical bifurcation i just messed up those pictures ok i'll i'll clear i'll i'll correct those in the slides so the equilibrium points they exist through all values of mu for mu less than 0 i have equilibrium points mu greater than 0 i have equilibrium points ok so only thing that changes contrast to what happened before right mu less than 0 equilibrium points disappear equilibrium points persist only they flip their characteristics right the point 0 0 changes from a stable to a saddle and mu 0 changes from a saddle to a stable node ok right ok now the third kind of bifurcation which we will look at is what is called as the pitchfork bifurcation. So, again I am looking at, at a system which looks uh, like this. So, I have a system of mu x 1 minus x 1 cube x 2 dot remains the same for mu less than 0 you can see there is a <coughs> unique equilibrium point and we can check that this is a stable node ok. And for mu greater than 0 the system will have uh, 3 equilibrium points and those will be a saddle at 0 0 and 2 stable nodes at mu comma 0 right ok. Let us quickly check what is happening first this equilibrium and this equilibrium. So, I will you can just say mu less than 0 mu greater than 0 and if I say the number of equilibriums I have one equilibrium point here I have three equilibrium points ok. Now, here well 0 0 was stable and this 0 comma 0 the origin becomes an unstable it is it's, it's becomes a saddle ok. And then two more equilibrium points appear one at minus mu comma 0 and one at plus mu comma 0 this is kind of interesting right. So, we had 
cases where equilibrium was disappearing here all of a sudden two additional equilibriums emerge. Okay. So, as mu crosses the bifurcation points the stable node at the origin it bifurcates into a saddle the, the stable node becomes a saddle and two other equilibriums are created which are stable nodes. Okay. How does the, the picture for this look like? Okay. So, this is okay, this is uh, called the, the transcritical but the super critical pitch fork okay. So, for mu less than 0 I had one nice stable point all of a sudden what happens is that this equilibrium point when mu goes to slightly higher value than 0 or even larger values it becomes unstable. Well, okay this is uh, so generally this is called a safe bifurcation is because uh, even though this system the equilibrium the origin changes from a stable to an unstable for very small values of mu you see that the system does not uh, go to infinity it just settles at this point and or settles at this point. So, for small values of mu this actually well this is there is no disaster that is happening that my system does not jump from uh, being stable all of a sudden to being unstable it just uh, shifts and sits up at, at, at a point which is, which, is, which is like close by right. So, the trajectories do not like go away to infinity right ok. So, and then now I have something called if I just flip the sign of x 1 cube the second term here I have the reverse behavior right. So, for mu less than 0 I will have 3 equilibrium points a stable node at 0 0 and 2 saddles at plus minus mu comma 0 ok. So, uh, have the picture right yeah. So, for mu less than 0 this is stable. So, this is all good uh, these two are unstable ok. Assume this is my operating point and uh, a sudden change in parameter or sudden change in conditions pushes the parameter from mu less than 0 to mu greater than 0. What you see is that these two red dots which were appearing here they disappear. So, 3 equilibriums they change to one equilibrium not only that this one equilibrium is unstable therefore you wouldn't you would never want this to happen right because whatever is uh, you are in, in in the stable region so even in this cases if you are within this region here you will be pushed to the to the to the green dot okay whereas once you bifurcate into this region then all the trajectories become unstable right so all trajectories go to infinity and therefore a subcritical bifurcation is called an unsafe bifurcation ok. So, to to summarize or to look at what really is happening in this in all the all of these examples is that when mu equal to 0 in this case you are encountering a 0 eigenvalue here a mu equal to 0 0 eigenvalue of the linearization right and when mu equal to 0 here you still encounter a 0 eigenvalue right. Similar things will happen also here when mu equal to 0 you encounter again a, 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 a 0 eigenvalue right ok. So, whenever a stable no node loses its stability at bifurcation point an eigenvalue of the Jacobian passes through 0 ok. So, this we were just looking at a stable node so far and stability is not just or all stable equilibriums are not just nodes it could always be or they can always be a, a stable focus. So, the last example that we will do for today is for this lecture is what happens when a stable node or when a, when a stable focus sorry loses stability ok. So, uh, I just do this uh, little example uh, where I have x 1 dot is mu ok this plus is, is a typo minus x 1 square minus x 2 square minus x 2 x 2 dot is uh, sorry this will again be a plus plus x 2 of mu minus x 1 square minus x 1 square plus plus x 1 ok. So, uh, just to, to do this analysis a little rigorously let us uh, do it in a okay, do it little differently. So, I have x 1 dot is x 1 mu minus x 1 square minus x 2 square plus x 2 
x2 dot is x2 mu minus x1 square minus x2 square minus of x1. Okay, this may look look a little complicated to solve, but some of our earlier courses taught us coordinate transformation, right? So where you just go from rectangular to polar. And in this coordinates, I have something nice. R dot is mu r minus r cube and theta dot is 1. Okay, so I will just analyze this in the polar coordinates now. Okay, so what are the equilibrium points? Okay, so it's a, a simple inspection would show that the system has a unique equilibrium point uh, at the origin. Even from here, you can find right, that the system has, has a unique equilibrium point at origin, and that's the only thing that happens. So let's uh, check what happens. Right? So for and by the standard uh, analysis, you can find that for mu less than zero the origin is a stable focus and for mu greater than 0, the origin is an unstable focus okay so let us uh, look at okay so how does how does the focus look like so it's it's a, a stable focus would just spiral this way to the origin which means a certain uh, radius r dot is 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 uh, is negative uh, less than 0 and some some for some, some constant theta for a periodic orbit you will have that r dot is equal to 0 that the radius does not change right. So, if you look at system which is the, the simple harmonic oscillator x 1 dot is x 2 x 2 dot is minus x 1 it will have a face portrait which is like just, just, just a circle right and if r, r, r dot is greater than 0 then you will have an, an unstable trajectory. So, this is a stable one and then r dot will be the opposite sign ok. So, just check let us check does something uh, interesting happen here when r dot equal to 0 r dot equal to 0 implies uh, mu r minus r cube equal to 0 or r mu minus r square equal to 0 r equal to 0 well not very interesting that is r equal to 0 is the x is, is the origin x 1 equal to 0 x 2 equal to 0 r equal to 0 I have x 1 equal to 0 x 2 equal to 0 whereas the other equilibrium point r will be square root of mu ok. So, something we can infer from here right that there is a possibility of a periodic orbit and possibly this could also be a, a limit cycle right of, uh, of radius r equal to square root of mu. Okay, so let us just check what happens with the face portraits of this. When mu less than 0, what I have is that the origin is a stable focus, all trajectory spiral to the origin. When mu greater than 0, this becomes an unstable equilibrium, but what happens is all the trajectories go and converge to a limit cycle whose radius is given by r equal to square root of mu. Okay. For mu greater than 0, origin is unstable, but there is a stable limit cycle that attracts all trajectories except the 0 solution, right. So, what happened at the 0 solution? 0 solution was r equal to 0, nothing changes here, right. So, in this case, we have a limit cycle and you see all trajectories, trajectories starting from here, from here, from here or from here, they will converge to this limit cycle. 
Okay. So, in this case what, what is essentially happening is when you change from a stable focus say uh, where eigenvalues could be minus 1 plus minus j omega to an unstable focus say with eigenvalues of uh, plus 1 plus, my, uh, plus 1 plus minus j omega right. You uh, a pair of complex eigenvalues actually pass through the imaginary axis. So, you had things here, things here and uh, the bifurcation point at, uh, at, at mu equal to 0, well you, you, your eigenvalues actually pass through the imaginary axis, right. Okay. So, this is a, a bit of qualitative behavior of how equilibrium points can change with changes in the system parameter. So, I will end this lecture here and next time when we meet, we will do a little more analysis on when do these kind of, of equilibriums uh, occur or we will try and derive certain necessary and sufficient conditions where I can guarantee that a system undergoes a certain uh, kind of equilibrium. And again, we will uh, revisit all the examples that we motivated our, our lecture with. Thanks for listening.